All right, guys, I have got a great treat for you today, a guest video by my friend and collaborator, Spencer Holt. If you don't know, Spencer was the assistant colorist on a big chunk of Green Monk, did a fantastic job. I loved working with him. And I also had this kind of really clunky way of doing um, borders for Green Monk, um, kind of panel, panel borders in Photoshop. And Spencer took that and he turned it in this really elegant, brilliant, simple way of doing uh, panels. So if you do comics digitally and you are having a hard time creating panels in Photoshop, definitely check this out. You should also check out um, Spencer's other YouTube work. He has a um, awesome YouTube channel that he does with Brady Gambles called Let's Making Comic. Um, and if you don't know Brady, Brady is basically a smart ass that likes to make smart ass comments on anything I post on social media. Um, but their stuff's definitely worth checking out. So check that out. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and I'm going to turn it over to Spencer. Welcome to Spencer's Comic Quick Tips for Comics. Here's a look at what we'll be creating today. A set of simple to use adjustable comic panels in Photoshop. Notice how easily I can make changes. I'm really proud of this technique because I tried for years to automate this process before coming up with a solution. Once you have your document all formatted and ready to go, first thing you'll want to do is create a new group. This is where all your gutters and margins are going to go. I'll call it panels. Now double click that panels folder to get to the layer style. We're going to be applying two styles to this folder, a stroke and a color overlay. Once I click on that stroke style, it'll check it automatically and give me some options. I'm going to make my border five pixels, but this will vary depending on your intended aesthetics, page size, and sexual preferences. What does matter is that the position is set to outside. This will ensure that your margins are white edge to edge instead of having a border all around. In theory, I guess you could change the stroke to any color you wanted, but that'd be weird, right? Adding a color overlay isn't necessary, but it's easy enough and helps idiot-proof this thing from your future self. Blend mode stays normal with the opacity at 100%. We'll go ahead and change the color to white. Hit OK to apply all that nonsense, and go ahead and pop a new layer into the group. Now that I've done all this, anything I draw on any layer in this group will have a 5 pixel stroke and a white fill, even if I'm drawing with a different color or some weird brush. Well, this isn't the most helpful really, but with a few clicks of my trusty rectangle marquee tool, we get something that actually starts to look like a comic. Now, I tend to have all my margins and panel placements all ready to go on separate layers with vectors using the rectangle tool. This takes a little more setup time up front, but it really pays off in the long run. Plus, I like being all nerdy and technical to make sure all my panels are perfectly evenly divided. Once again, this has been Spencer's Comic Quick Tips for Comics. A tagline would go here if I had one. So pretty cool, huh? So try this out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to Let's Making Comic. Like this video, and we'll talk to you next time.